Tyrell Warren family. I'm so glad to see you again this week, and I am so excited about this week's art lesson. Remember how this month we're talking about grit in art. We're talking about artists who persevered through hard or challenging things. But for last week and this week, we're also talking about Hispanic Heritage Month. And we're talking about artists from Spanish speaking countries. And today's artist is maybe not a really well known artist. In fact, she wasn't really well known for anything just a few years ago. But then something hard happened in her life. And today we're going to talk about what that was and the beautiful art that came out of it. Today's artist is a woman named Yuyi Morales, and she is the author and illustrator of this book. It's called Dreamers. And I'm gonna read it to you today. It's a picture book. It's simple. It's beautiful. I've read it so many times. This week alone, I can hardly count because I just love it. And as I read it, I want you to listen for the story, but I also want you to pay close attention to all of the art inside of the book because Ms. Morales not only wrote the words, but she created all of the art for the book. After we read the story, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more of her story, and then we're gonna look up look at some of her art up close, and then we're gonna make some art kind of like what she did here. So settle in and let's read together. Dreamers by Yuyi Morales. Can you see, look at all of the drawings. I dreamed of you, then you appeared. Together, we became amor, love, amor. Resplendent life, you and I. One day, we bundled gifts in our backpack and crossed a bridge outstretched like the universe. Adios, corazón. See her backpack and the journey that the mother and the little baby boy are going on. And when we made it to the other side, thirsty, in awe, unable to go back, we became immigrants. Migrantes, you and I, the sky and the land welcomed us in words unlike those of our ancestors. Look closely. What you see here says what and say something, but in the book they're written backwards in the clouds. There were so many things we didn't know. Unable to understand and afraid to speak. We made lots of mistakes. <laughs> Look what's happening there. They're playing in a public fountain and it looks like the police officer is not too happy with them. You and I became caminantes. Thousands and thousands of steps we took around this land until the day we found... Hmm. What do you think it is that they found that changed their life? A place we had never seen before. Suspicious. Improbable. What is it? Have you been to a place like this? Unbelievable, surprising. What are they seeing? Un, 
imaginable. Where we didn't need to speak, we only needed to trust. And we did. Look at all the adventures they're going on in their books. Books became our language. Books became our home. Books became our lives. We learned to read to speak, to write, and to make our voices heard. Someday, we will become something we haven't even yet imagined. But right now, we are stories. We are two languages. We are lucha, we are resilience, we are hope, we are dreamers, soñadores of the world. We are love, amor, love. I just love this story. It's the story, it's an autobiography. It's a story that Ms. Morales wrote about herself and her son when they immigrated to the United States of America. They moved from Mexico to California and they didn't speak English. They didn't know how to get around town, but then they discovered what? They discovered the library, the public library. And Ms. Morales says it was there that they found picture books upon picture books upon picture books and every day, they would go and read and look at the pictures and they would learn the stories through the pictures. And then you know what happened? Even though they had the hard job of learning a new language and learning a new culture and learning a new place, Ms. Morales also began to learn a new skill. After seeing all of these amazing books, she went out and bought herself her first set of paints. And she began, remember this picture here, where it says, someday we will become something we haven't even yet imagined. She was a swim coach in Mexico. She wasn't an artist or an author, but this hard journey and this hard process of learning and the discovery of the amazing beauty and world of books inspired her to become a writer and an illustrator. So she's an author and an artist. Now I want you to notice just a couple more things about this book. There are some images that are repeated throughout the book. Mrs. Morales didn't just draw in the book, she also cut out pictures. She took pictures of hand-stitched Mexican textiles. She took pictures of the sidewalk outside of her house. And she repeatedly puts swallows, that's what this, bird, this kind of bird is, and monarch butterflies all the way throughout her book. Do you know why? Because those beautiful creatures migrate as well. They travel from one land to another every single year. And so they're symbols for her of the hope that can come when we travel to new places, where we try new and hard things. So I'm gonna just flip through one more time just so you can look again at the pictures. See if we can find those butterflies. That'll give us a hint about our project for today. Look, there's a little butterfly up on that bookshelf. Can you see it? They're all over the place. Right there. So today what we're going to do is we are going to create our own butterflies. But we're going to do them in the style of Yu Yu Morales's 
Mexican textiles. If you look closely, actually, this is kind of a neat thing to do. Did you know that sometimes if you open up the front and back cover, you get a great big picture. So let's look closely at these Mexican textiles. Can you see how there are stitches, individual little stitches, like somebody took a needle and thread, brightly colored thread, and stitched them on this black fabric. There's so many neat details. So I thought that we should make butterflies, just like Miss Morales's butterflies that are woven all throughout her book, but we're gonna do it in the style of those Mexican hand-stitched fabrics. Here are two butterflies that I have made and I taped them onto a stick that I found in my backyard. And now I have this amazing sculpture that can sit on my desk as decoration. So let's get creating. We're gonna make these and you can make as many as you want, but I'm gonna show you some of the steps on how to do that. What you'll need today are some very simple supplies. You'll need a piece of your art paper. You'll need your markers. You'll need your pencil. You'll need your scissors. And then if you want tape, you can use tape or a stick, or you don't even need those things. The main things you need are markers, scissors, pencil, and paper. Okay, let's get creating. Okay, everybody has your paper. First thing we're gonna do is fold our paper into four pieces, or into, into fourths, so that we can create four different little butterflies. So I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna fold it just like this in half so that these edges line up. I'm gonna press it down and slide my finger to get a crease right there. Then I'm gonna take my paper again and I'm gonna fold it across just like that. This does not have to be perfect, so don't take too much time on this. I'm gonna fold it like that. What that does is that gives us four smaller pieces of paper. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out my four pieces of paper. And because I'm lazy, I'm gonna do two at a time. While it's folded like this, I'm going to take my scissors, and this does not have to be perfect. I'm just going to cut along that strip. So now I have two pieces of paper. I'm going to tuck them inside like that. Flip it open. Cut along that strip. Boom. Now I have four pieces of paper. Can y'all see how dust how messy my desk is. This is because I make art on here all the time. It just always stays messy. So we've got four pieces of paper, which means we can make four butterflies. But let's start off by just making one. So I'm gonna take this piece again and fold it in half. This will help me know where the center of my butterfly body is. And I'm gonna do two wings on this side and two wings on this side with my body in the middle. The first thing we're gonna do is just draw, here, let's look at let's look at a butterfly together first. See how that fits right nicely on there? So we're gonna draw our body, and sometimes you can do a little head if you want and bend the body, and then we're gonna do one wing, two wings, one wing, two wings. So let's go just like this. I actually prefer it this way. So I'm gonna do right here on that center fold, I'm gonna do just a little bit. Oh, and I remember it. I'm sorry, last week you probably couldn't see my pencil marks. So I'm gonna make them darker this week. So I'm gonna do a little head and then I'm gonna do my body nice and big. Not all the way to the bottom, but pretty close. And then for my wings, I'm gonna start, because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna do my left wings first. That way, when I go to do my right wings, I'll be able to see what I've drawn and try to match them on this side. I always do an invisible drawing first. So I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna make an oval shape up here at the top, and I'm gonna do an oval shape at the bottom. So oval shape at the top, 
And then I'm going to do a bigger oval shape at the bottom. Now that I can see those, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. An oval shape at the top. Oops, look at that. That's what happens when Mrs. Burke is looking in the camera and not at the butterfly I'm drawing. That's why we have erasers. And if you need to turn your paper a little bit, sometimes I need to turn my paper to do an oval shape at the bottom. Now, is it perfect? Nope. Does it need to be? Never. So now I'm going to add just some little antennas at the top. Pretty easy, isn't it? Now you could leave your butterfly just like that, but to get those stitches, the looks of those really neat stitches, we're gonna add a few details. So let's see, inside of my top wings, I'm going to add another oval on the inside. And then I think I'm going to add a moon shape on the edge here. And I'll do a moon shape on the edge there. Down here, I think I'm gonna just do some big, long teardrops. Big, long teardrops. Now you can do anything you want for your shapes. Let's do another one really quickly so we can see. If I make another butterfly and do the same thing with my head and my body, this time I'm going to do a different shaped wing. I'm going to go up, wiggle, 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 and back in, out. This is kind of triangle wings. Wiggle, 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 back in, and then I'm going to do big wiggle, wiggle, back in and then I'm going to do the same thing over here big so look how different those two are and then maybe my shapes in this one maybe I'm going to do a big circle and a big circle and then maybe here I'm going to do oh I don't know let's say I'm going to do a rectangle you, as long as whatever you do on the left wing, you do on the right wing. Whatever you do up here, you do over here. We want the left side and the right side to look alike. That's called symmetry. When one side looks just like the other one, we're making symmetrical art. So let's see here, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some triangles, one here, one here and a triangle here, and a triangle here. And then I think here, I'm just gonna do one big triangle. So whatever I did on the left, if I were to cover that up, it looks like the same on the other side. Same with my other butterfly, right? Here I have moon oval, moon oval, and then big three teardrops, okay? So you can make as many butterflies as you want. The fun comes when we start to make them look like they have these really neat stitches. And it looks so fancy, but it's really not. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So go ahead and get your markers. And we'll start with this one. We're gonna do the same thing with coloring. Whatever I color on this side, I'm gonna color it on this side. I'm gonna use the fat part of my marker, the broad part, to color in my shapes. And we're gonna just use our colors. We're not gonna use our black marker yet. So I'm gonna color those red, and I'm gonna color this one, the middle one red. Then I think I'll do, let's do some orange up here. So whatever I color orange up here, I'm gonna color orange on this side. 
Okay, now just go ahead and start coloring. You can watch me color this and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that we are finished with the basic coloring, now is when the exciting part comes. Look at the difference between those two butterflies. Doesn't this one look so fancy? So here's how we're gonna do it. First thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and color in the body of my butterfly. And I'll add a little bit of extra to the antennas. Then, I'm going to trace the outline and I'm going to do one wing for you all the way through. So I'm going to trace the outline there. I'm going to trace whatever shapes I put inside the wing. Then I need to get this idea of stitches, of rows of stitches. So I'm going to draw some wiggly lines right across what I've done here. Just straight across. Let's do one more here. See how those are kind of wiggly? Let's look at our original inspiration piece. You see how each row is kind of a, there's kind of a wiggliness between them. They're not perfectly straight. So now that I've got those rows, now I'm gonna start adding my stitches. And there's two ways you can do this. You can just start making lines. And this separates those colors and makes them look like stitches. Or if you wanna get a little fancier than that, you'll notice that on the top of these stitches, they're kind of rounded. So the, if you wanna go even fancier, you can come up and go around like you're making lowercase m's over and over and over again. So I'm gonna come up to my wiggly line, curve around and come down. It's just a little bit different. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but if you wanna try that, you can try that. And I'm gonna do that on my whole butterfly and watch what a difference it's gonna make.
Okay. So we have our butterfly all made, all of our stitches drawn. And the next step is to cut our butterfly out. Just some reminders about cutting. Our thumb goes in the top little hole. Our fingers go in the big hole. You can even sing the song, chop, 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 fingers on the bottom and thumb on top. And we almost always cut away from ourselves, holding the scissors fairly still and turning our paper as we go. So go ahead and cut out your butterfly with me. It's okay if some of the white shows, it doesn't really matter. Well, here we have our butterfly. It looks like it's about ready to fly away. The last little step that you can do, you get to kind of choose. Remember how we folded our butterflies at the beginning? Well, we can still use that fold in the body back there to give our, our butterfly a little bit of dimension. And I've thought of lots of different things I could do with my butterfly. I thought I could take some dental floss or some thread, maybe somebody in your house likes to sew, and I could take a piece of thread, oops, or a piece of dental floss. I could flip this over, and I could put tape on the back of my butterfly, and I could hang it up in my, in my room, I could hang it from my light, I could hang it in my window, or I could do like I did with these butterflies, where I put a piece of tape on the back and I tape them right onto a stick. And now they make a really neat piece of sculpture that sits on my desk. It's 3D. I've taken this on and off a couple times, so my tape needs to be refreshed a little bit. Maybe you want to turn yours into a bookmark. Maybe you want to make a whole string of butterflies and hang them across your room. So many things that you can do with these fun butterflies. All right, boys and girls, I hope you had as much fun as I did making this butterfly today. I can't wait to see what you do with them. Are you going to string them across your whole house? Are you going to make a bookmark or a sculpture? Are you going to glue it on top of a notebook? Maybe you're going to make a hair bow. I don't know. I can't wait to see what you do with them. And then I have a bonus challenge for you. If you want to, do you remember how we made our art notebooks out of cereal boxes the very first week? What if you made your own book? Do you have an idea for a story? or for pictures. Maybe you wanna tell the story of an adventure your family went on or of something hard that you did that turned into something really good. I know that I have a couple of books that I've written, but they're just sitting in notebooks right now. And maybe I wanna be more like Mrs. Morales and turn my ideas into a real book. So if you do that, Will you send a picture to your teacher so that he or she can show me? Because I sure would love to see what it is that you're creating. That's all for this week. I love getting to draw together even when we're apart.